be sure you are mature enough to witness the shocking details of this video. <coughs> Welcome to the Haunted Mansion. Feel right at home. I am the Phantom of the Darkens, and now I will tell you a scary fact. Once, there was a 14-year-old girl named Zoe. She lived in an average-sized house with her two parents and her pet fish. Nothing interesting, she was just your average girl. She went to school, she hung out with friends, all the normal things that a girl her age would usually do. But, her story. Her story is not average at all, not in the slightest. She was a little bit of a geek, spending a lot of time on the computer playing video games and had a bit of a soft spot for scary stories and pictures that she could find on the internet. Yet she was never afraid of them, ever. She lived in your typical one-story house, and she had a bedroom which was on the other side of the house to her parents. Enough about Zoe, now for her story. May 24, 2008 it was about 10.30 p.m. She was getting a little tired, but she stayed up till about 11 p.m. to chat with friends on her iPhone until she drifted off to sleep after saying goodnight to everyone. She woke up at exactly 12 a.m. to an unfamiliar noise, a strange scratching sound coming from the roof above her. It sounded like somebody was scratching on the roof with the brick or tile. She sat up in bed to be able to listen to the sound without the muffling of her hair against her pillow. She listened to it for three more minutes. The scraping was following the rhythm and it was therapeutic. But not a Cuban. She snapped out of it, got up and headed to her parents' bedroom to tell them about it. Now, according to most internet stereotypes, most people are quite scared of walking around their dark house at night while strange noises are heard, but as I said, she wasn't scared of anything. She just strolled her way peacefully to her parents' room. When she got there and told them, they were obviously tired and a little mad that their daughter had woken them up at such an hour. Mom, Dad, there's a weird noise coming from the roof. It's kinda creepy. Zoe, go back to bed, said her dad. You have school tomorrow. But, but, Mom, the noise is really weird. It's probably just a branch from that tree hanging over the house, replied her mom. But it didn't sound like a tree branch. Besides, we don't even have any trees hanging over our. Her parents gave her a stare. Just listen to us, said her dad. Go to bed and let us sleep, or we'll take away your phone. She stopped talking and headed back to her room. When she got back, the noise was still there. She looked at the clock, 12.08, so she hopped into bed and tried to sleep. She just couldn't get back to sleep with that noise still being emitted, so she lay there, waiting for the noise to stop. After what seemed like hours later, the noise faded away, stopping at exactly 12.30 p.m., what strange timing, she had thought. May 25, 2008 it was again about 10.45 p.m., she was getting tired, but after last night, she decided that she would go to bed earlier so that she fell into a deeper sleep and might not be woken from the noise. This seemed logical to her, so she went to sleep. It had only felt like a moment that she was asleep for, but once again, she woke at 12 p.m. exactly to a noise. This time, the noise was different and felt closer to her. It sounded like a tile or brick ripping through felt or some other material similar. She was sure that whatever was causing the noise was ripping through the insulation which was inside her roof. This night, she decided against going to tell her parents because of the cold welcome they gave her after waking them very late at night. She figured that she'd just tell them at their breakfast table the next day. Same as the previous night, she waited until her clock flipped from 12.29pm to 12.30pm. At that moment, the noise faded away scary accurate timing. She thought before drifting off to sleep. May 26, 2008 at the breakfast table at approximately 7.07 a.m., she told them about the strange noise she had heard again last night. They simply shook it off like it was no big deal at all and told her, we did have a rat problem up there last month, remember? This calmed her, slightly. 
By slightly, I mean not at all. She knew it wasn't rats. The scraping had a rhythm to it. No rat could keep it up for half an hour. Dot it was once again time for bed. She went to sleep even earlier than the previous nights, at 10.30. She was trying to prove that her theory of falling into a deeper sleep may help her block out the noise and enjoy a peaceful night of sleep. Her theory was unproven at 12 p.m., as she woke up to the noise once again. By this time, she was actually getting quite aggravated. She just wanted a decent night of sleep. She listened in closer to it. It felt nearer to her than ever now, for it was scratching against the ceiling. She could hear the echoes of the noise reverberating around the walls of her room. She knew it now. There was something that was after her, getting closer to her every night. For once in her life, she felt scared, scared that whatever was making the noise was going to do something terrible to her. If she were to know about what would happen the next night, she would be sleeping in her parents' bed by now. She now had no desire of moving anywhere away from her bed until the noise had stopped and the night was over. May 27, 2008 she told her parents about the noise again at breakfast. They seemed a little concerned this time, as Zoe seemed quite unnerved and snappy, but of course, they ignored her complaints about the noise and told her to braven up. That's not even a word, but to her it basically meant, deal with it. At school that day, she came off as edgy and anxious to her friends. They thought nothing of it and thought that it was probably just because she didn't get much sleep. You're damn right she wasn't getting much sleep, and the sleep she did get wasn't that relaxing either. She kept having terrible dreams of what might be up there, what might be after her. They decided to throw her a bit of a surprise party to hopefully calm her nerves and put her in a happier mood. Two of her friends had a double class of food studies that day and asked the teacher if they could bake some cupcakes and bake a cake while her two other friends decided to sneak into the drama room and find what decorations they could there. Of course they would give back everything they borrowed. One of the girls spontaneously decided to wear a mask she found in the costumes box to the party and give her a friend lay scare. To be continued. Join us. Subscribe.